This first reaction setup looks at the combination of two reactants, the identities of which are given in your unknown. When these two reactants are combined, they will form a precipitate. And then, through additional experiments, it can be determined what the identity of the limiting reactant is. In the reaction, exactly 25.0 milliliters of reactant A is combined with 25.0 milliliters of reactant B. The result is a white precipitate that is formed. This precipitate can then be filtered through a piece of filter paper. Over time, the filtrate, which is the clear liquid, passes through the filter paper and keeps the solid contained up top. Different grades of filter paper will allow the filtrate to pass through either more quickly or more slowly depending on the grade. And this will be based, or this will determine what size of particle can pass through to the test tube below. In the second step, once sufficient filtrate is collected, we can move on to the second set of reactions. In the second set of reactions, we are taking the filtrate, which contains any unreacted ions, and we will be reacting it with both reactant A and reactant B separately. Initially, when reacting with reactant A, there is no precipitate formation, and the solution is still a clear and colorless liquid. When reacting with reactant B, a white precipitate is formed, indicating a reaction. Based on these observations, you should be able to identify the identity of the limiting reactant that was in the original reaction. In the second reaction, the specific reaction of calcium chloride and sodium hydroxide is observed. The concentrations of these two solutions can be found in your unknown file. Exactly 25.0 milliliters of calcium chloride is reacted with exactly 25.0 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. This causes a precipitate to form. The overall solution and precipitate can then be passed through filter paper. By passing the reaction through the filter paper, all of the unreacted ions pass through the filter and are present in the filtrate or the liquid that passes through. All of the reacted ions, including all of the limiting reactant, are contained in the precipitate, which is trapped on top of the filter paper. Once some time has passed and enough filtrate has been collected, to, we can perform a second set of experiments.
to the filtrate which contains all unreacted ions, we can then add additional reactant and perform a second set of experiments. Initially, on one side, by adding additional sodium hydroxide, there is no reaction. By adding additional calcium chloride, we see the formation of a white precipitate, indicating a reaction. Based on these observations, you can determine what is the limiting reactant in this particular setup, as well as using the concentrations given in your unknown file, you can determine the, the theoretical yield of the reaction, as well as specifically how much solid was present in the reaction, taking into account the solubility values of the products.